Welcome to episode 84, Ecstatic Spirituality. Well, join us as we share a little bit about um, our individual experiences with ecstatic spirituality. And join us as we talk about using that ecstasy as a magical tool in our rituals on our own and with a group. Mm. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Witchy Wit Podcast, where we look at life through a witchy lens. I'm Kimberlyn. I'm Leilani. At Witchy Wit, we explore current events, ideas, music and books, and experiences in ways that recognize energy and life in everybody and everything. We are both real witches. And we bring two real perspectives through the lens of our different ages, races, and backgrounds. With a healthy skepticism for what we have been told is true, our conversations are raw, candid, and vulnerable. Join us as we cast a spell to uncover what we each know is true in our intuitive, witchy selves. Welcome to episode 84. Ecstatic, Ecstatic Spirituality! Spirituality. Woohoo! Um, yeah, this is a, an opportunity to talk a little bit about some of the things that um, we're excited about. Yeah, and, and, and as somebody who identifies as an energy witch, this is a really big part of my being a witch. So Yay. I'm excited to share. Yeah, me too. But before we do that, let's uh, catch everyone and ourselves up mm-hmm. on uh, what we've been doing since we last got together. I would love that. How, okay. Do you want to go first? I'll go first. Um, so I have, there is a, I, I, I belong to a couple of like Instagram, Facebook sites, and I rarely get on social media. Mm-hmm. But one day I was um, in the uh, in the bathroom <laughs> with my phone <laughs> and I spent, a, my, I'll put it this way, my, my legs fell asleep. <laughs> so you, 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 okay, uh-huh. painting that picture, right? Uh-huh. Um, but I found one of the sites that I had joined and just never spent, uh, it, it doesn't come up in my, the, the algorithms doesn't mm-hmm. prompt it. So I never get a chance to see any of their posts. But for some reason, um, that day, there were at least four or five posts about you can only, along the lines of, you can only change the world. You can only do your mission. You can only do what you're here for if you're really you. And, which sounds kind of strange, but I, it, it really resonated for me because there's so many places in my life where um, I, I feel like I'm I'm out as a witch and, you know, various aspects, I don't know, sexuality, etc. But then there's other places where I, I don't know if I feel like it's being polite or I really don't want to mess up, you know, like rock the boat or whatever. And so I don't show all of the facets of myself that I could. I mean, there's times when um, someone will say something and I could contribute something to the conversation from my perspective and I don't. Mm. Um, and and I have a lot of reasons slash excuses for doing that. Um, and and I'm thinking now, I'm you know, I'm, I'm 65. I'm, I'm, I'm heading towards, I'm galloping towards 66. <laughs> and so when am I going to, I mean... Mm, I don't have to, but I want to. Mm. And, and I'm, and I don't, I don't mean that I'm going to be necessarily monopolizing the conversation and telling everybody, you know, my thinking about different dimensions, et cetera, et cetera. But if there's an opportunity when I can wish someone well and say, you know, I'm sending you some healing energy, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to censor myself. So that's kind of my decision. It was, and when I made, I made this decision. Um, and I just remember feeling that this, whoosh, you know, like this kind of clearing. And I felt, I looked around and I'm in the same place I'd been for the past 40 minutes, Mm -hmm. but everything just seemed like shinier and brighter and almost like I was kind of flickering to like a different plane or whatever, a plane in which I can be myself and not care Mm -hmm. how other people feel about it. I think that's a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, Well, that excites me because I I love you. Thank you. So the yeah. idea of more you, yes, please. Well, it's exciting and scary. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. um, so I'll probably report back to you on, on the success of, of my implementation of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we might mm-hmm. need to revisit episode one. I, you know, actually, I think I'll go back and listen to episode mm. one. I think it's going to be very, that, which is authenticity, mm-hmm. um, which I think will be very, very useful for me. Thank you for the reminder. I appreciate that. Thank you for the reminder in my life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what about you? What's going on with you? Well, I think it's kind of related. I mm-hmm. thought I would authentic, I would share authentically about uh, going mm-hmm. to the dance competition that I went to. Woo-hoo. So I used to dance uh, like multiple times a week. 
before COVID, and then during COVID, uh, the uh, like the community I was a part of um, stopped existing. So after COVID, I just really haven't found my niche or or my groove. So uh, it's been it was almost two years, and so I decided to go back, and it was really scary to go. Um, and I just had a lot of grief around going and, and the people that I love are not going to be there because they've dispersed, dispersed or moved on or whatever, you know, um, which is totally fine, you know, but, but it was hard for me because there was no, there was no ending. There was no goodbye. There was no, there was none of that. No sort closure. Of, there, yeah. It mm-hmm. was just like, I went one Tuesday to my club and then COVID happened and then I never went back, you know? So, um, so it was hard to like go and know that like the community that I, when I would go, like there was a community, there was like lots of people there, you know, there's between like 20 and 60 people that I knew there from my community, not just from other communities. So, so it was hard to go knowing that it would be bittersweet, but I knew it was something that I wanted and I went and I had a wonderful weekend. I danced all weekend, like eight hours a day. You know, I love it. I know I shared in a previous episode, dance is Camino prep, Mm -hmm. you know, possibility. Mm -hmm. But what I also wanted to share was that like, I also hid in the bathroom. Like I got, I I showed up and I got scared and I started having feelings. And so I like, I went into the bathroom and like sat, Hey, both of our check-ins have to do with the bathroom. (laughs) You know, this is why, this is why we work so well together where we resonate on so many different levels. So I went and I like sat in the bathroom and I, and I like, had some feelings and it, and it was, uh, hard, you know, but I thought about like, who do I want to be in this moment? Like who, what, who do I want to be this weekend? And I want to be the person that dances. Mm. So I also want to be the person that feels my feelings. So like I sat in the bathroom, I felt my feelings. I did some breathing and then I went back out there, but it occurred to me that like, the people who saw me and the people I interacted with, you know, saw me being happy and me having fun and me, you know, talking and me having fun dances. But the truth of it is that it was much more complex than that. And then, and so just thinking about how that, I feel like that's true just in general. Uh, like life. Yes. Yeah. 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 And thank you so much for sharing that because I, my, my, pictures of you at these things Mm -hmm. are you just kind of you know just I I picture you like dancing and then like twirling to the next person and dancing (laughs) with them and I know I know it's a little bit more you know Mm -hmm. uh, structured than that but that's like my image Mm -hmm. and and of you dancing till the cows you know till like morning or Mm -hmm. something like that and and thank you for showing me that that there's all these other layers of things that are going on at the same time yeah thank you Mm -hmm. um so maybe we can talk about it (laughs) often Off mic um, another time, but I'd love to hear more. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got more. You got, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> well, speaking of more, mm-hmm. um, I, I like more ecstatic spirituality. Yeah. We can never have enough. <laughs> I do not. I would love to reach that point, but I, I don't know if that's possible. <laughs> so let's. Well, let's. First of all, let's. When we we use this term, and one of the things I've learned with teaching music with students. Um, is that we'll have kind of this common word that everyone Mm -hmm. uses. And then when you start digging deep, it has, for individuals, it has different meanings, right? Mm -hmm. Or they're approaching it differently. So maybe we could start with how we think about like the term and what it means to us. Yeah. So for me, it's an altered state of consciousness. Uh, And then what makes it different from other types of altered states of consciousness is that it has to do with me, it has to do with, with energy. That's that's where I would start. Okay, um, so I would add. I love the the um, uh, altered state of mm-hmm. consciousness. Mm-hmm. I love that idea because for me, it's um, it's actually it's it's so funny because it's it's me kind of stepping a little bit outside of kind of mundane life, but it's really how I want all of my life to be, mm-hmm. you know, but um, so it, I I agree. I, for me, it's also energy there's energy involved. Um, I, and one of the things that I kind of want to counter is often when people hear the term, Oh, I don't know what people, 
often when I hear the term, I want to leap to ecstasy as being this, whoa, yay! You know, mm, I'm, uh-huh. and, and it can be. It can it, be. It can be. Mm-hmm. But it's sometimes, it can be also very, ex- ecstasy can also be very, very quiet for me. Mm-hmm. And so, so I love the altered state of consciousness. Is that what you said? Yes. And, and, um, uh, and I love the idea that it has to do with energy. And I want to, I want to say that it's this, kind of really focused for me it um i think there's a an element of of focus that allows it to to kind of bloom and be a part of that time and and then sometimes i feel as if i lose that focus and then it's gone mm, okay mm-hmm. so so that for for me i think that that's an important part of that focus and mm-hmm. and the the ability to maintain it mm-hmm. i like that mm-hmm. there i think too for me that ex, an ecstatic an ecstatic experience for me involves my body. Mm. Uh, whereas like I could have other experiences with altered states of consciousness, for example, trance, uh, that's more in my head. And then I can have other ecstatic, or I'm sorry, other, um, altered states of consciousness where it feels like what's, what the work that's being done is like outside of my body or my head. And it's like existing somewhere else. But for me, ecstatic states of, con- of, of, of an ecstatic state is very much of my body is a part of it. It's not limited to my body, but my body is for sure connected for me. I love, <laughs> okay. What she said, <laughs> ditto. Um, no, thank you for, for articulating that because for me, it's also, it has to do with my body, but um, it's less. Um, mm, mm, okay. I'm going to think of it more that I feel my body as a part of all that is. Mm, yes. And so yes. for me, so it may not necessarily, I could be moving. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes in many cases I am. Um, but it's also, I, when I mention that quiet state, sometimes it's like this, this energy that's, uh, it's, and it's mm-hmm. in me, but it's also outside of me. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. So I love yeah, that. Yeah. I love that. That connected. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That definitely feels connected to me. Yeah, so it for so this ecstatic spirituality. Some people might say that it's me um, operating on my fifth dimensional self mm-hmm. from my from my fifth dimensional mm-hmm. self. So remember our uh, uh, what was the episode? I can't remember. I um, can't remember. We had a whole yeah. talk about mm-hmm. about like dimensions, and yeah. I might have have have, have uh, the term dimensions in there or something like that. Yeah, but um, but planes of existence. Planes of existence. Planes that's of existence. it. Yes. Yeah, yes. That's, so so for me. It, and that's why I want it to be. And that's so. So if I'm in in that uh, that zone or that in that intense focus, that I feel is me with everything dropped, none of the sensors, none of the walls. You know, just me being me. And and I believe that me being me means I'm I'm a part of everything else. And so um, f- so that ecstatic state for me allows me to tap into that. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, I feel like, um, the way that when you, whenever I turn on a light and the light rays shine out and then the light rays light up everything around it and, and like the light touches the walls and everything, that's how I, I feel like I'm that. Ooh, you're the light bulb. I am. You're the light bulb, yeah. but you're also the light. Yes. Yes. I and love and that. the light is touching and I'm blending everything. in, I'm connected to everything else. Um, and it could be like you said, it could be like high energy, you know, uh, or it could be that I'm sitting there. Um, like slowly rocking back and forth with mm-hmm. my eyes closed, silent. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. I could be standing up, jumping barefoot up and down, screaming. I've seen you do both of those. Yes, things. yes, you have. <laughs> and it's been it's been it's been wondrous to behold. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so um, maybe we could talk. Maybe we could. Uh, why are we talking about this now? That's a great question. <laughs> We went on a retreat. <laughs> we went on a retreat where the the focus of the retreat, which was co facilitated by you, yes, was it was ecstatic spirituality. Mm-hmm. And um, fun side note, it was impossible for me to. We wanted to call it the mystery of ecstasy. Oh but, right, right, I remember. Yes, but, yes. Um, the platform that our group uses to communicate uh, it it flagged all my posts <laughs> <laughs> as drug related. So I had to. <laughs> So we had to change the name to use the phrase ecstatic instead of ecstasy. So, well, you know, you're seeing all of these other sites that talk about ecstasy Mm -hmm. and it's a manufactured, um, drug that helps people to do what we do naturally for free. Yes. You know, think about it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think we have less side effects. 
there are less side effects <laughs> or le- less <laughs> undesirable side yes, effects. Yes. 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 For sure. For sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but I, but I'm sure that everybody's having fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So yeah. So we, we, we started thinking about this because you were uh, preparing for mm-hmm. this retreat and I'm kind of, we, and I think we've alluded to this at various points over the course of our three and a half seasons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, but um, but yeah, this is our first opportunity to, to just talk about it in um, specifically. And I think our circle leans more towards an ecstatic practice than other circles. I would agree. So, I would agree. so for it's a little bit the water that I'm swimming in all the time, um, which is convenient because it, it's it's me and it's who I am and what I what be, what speaks to me spiritually. Yeah. Well, and I would assume that if our group wasn't leaning towards this, that you would not necessarily have been a part of it. Correct. Right? I you probably know, so, wouldn't have stayed. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, it, and, and we, you know, we do, we approach it in a number of different ways. And, and I would say that we're, the women in our group are in various points of the spectrum mm-hmm. in terms of um, ecstatic, uh, ex, the ecstatic experience in general. But one of the things I love is how in our circle, our women, the minute we say, okay, we're going to do something, they just throw themselves mm-hmm. into it. And I think, oh, yeah, let's talk about that. Because I think a part of the of, of, of the ecstatic experience is that letting go. I mentioned it in terms of me, but letting go of, you know, are people looking at me? Do I look silly? That kind of stuff. And and um, the ability to just dive into it, mm-hmm. I think, is an important part of it. I, I think so, too. That idea of that that ability for me to lose that sort of part of my consciousness where I'm aware of others uh, in the way of like uh, being co- self conscious of it during an ecstatic experience I lose that and um, are people looking at me probably not um, you know but like do I look pr- stupid probably and that's okay <laughs> you look ecstatic I look ecstatic and that's what matters yeah so there is that sense of vulnerability for me and when we were at that re- at the retreat together there was a moment when my conscious my consciousness was shifting. And I remember looking around the fire circle and thinking like, if I do this, I'm going to look real dumb. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, and then allowing myself to Mm -hmm. slip into that altered state of consciousness. And I'm sure I did look dumb, but I want to look dumb and have an ecstatic experience and know that that doesn't matter. Yeah. And I would, I would hazard, I I have no idea if you did because I, (laughs) I tend to close my eyes, so and I would assume maybe half of the people in our group were probably doing probably. the same thing. So yeah, so yeah, yeah. So, you know, you can look however you want. We yeah. wouldn't, we quite frankly we don't care because well, we're, we're having our experience. And, am I, and am I, was I sitting there like looking at all of y'all and being like, "She looks dumb." <laughs> no, because I was having an ecstatic experience. You know, it's yeah. it's like the strip club rule. Like if you're in the strip club, you can't tell on someone for being in the strip club because you were at the strip club the too. Stuff, that's right. So everybody else is having an ecstatic experience. So that sounds fine. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So so why? Why? I mean, it's I, I'm 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 hearing an answer there, but let's maybe articulate it. You know, why do we do it? Why? Like, what's the point? Mm. Mm. Well, first of all, uh, it's just it's just really pleasurable for me. Oh, so just in fun. general, like even if the even if I didn't get anything from it, which I, we're going to talk about. Mm-hmm. You just asked mm-hmm. the question why, but I would just say in general, it's just a great experience. Oh my gosh, so much fun! It's so much fun. So much fun. It's so yes. enjoyable. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean that it's not scary, Mm -hmm. you know, and there's a loss of control and it can feel really overpowering, but it's so much fun. So that's my first thing. It's just like, it's an enjoyable experience for me. It is. It is. And, and I didn't know when, I I mean, I, I, I think I mentioned this um, actually at this retreat, but the first quote unquote ecstatic experience that I remember having, I was like, I, I might have been a teenager. I don't even know if I was. And it was in the, it was in Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church um, in Newark, New Jersey. um, And uh, where, you know, there was this, this, you know, preaching going on, music going on, the organ, the choir. And, and I just, and I wasn't, it's not like the Blues Brothers where people are like cartwheeling down the aisles or anything like that. But people are dancing, I have Mm -hmm. to say. Um, And I wasn't, I was very, very still, but I felt that, that whoosh. And I felt that altered state of consciousness and, um, and I felt this kind of connection. And at the time I was couching it as I'm feeling God or the Mm -hmm. Holy spirit or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, um, and now I, I would uh, frame that differently, but I just remember thinking like, I want more of that. (laughs) 
Yeah. And and then I, I searched in a number of different places that wouldn't have gotten it for me. <laughs> so I was, you know, but um, I, I that was the first time I experienced it. And it was it was um, overwhelming um, and incredibly powerful. And I just felt so in touch with the divine. Mm. Yeah. Um, so 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 it's back to my question is uh, just that feeling of connection um, was was a powerful one for me. Um, and, and that's one of the reasons why I do it. And then the, often the result for me after that is usually some self-knowledge or self-awareness or, um, I come back from it. I feel a better person for whatever reason. So it's personal development as well. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I would totally agree. Uh, I, I found it in, uh, before I knew, before I knew what it was, I found it by going sober to dance clubs and Mm -hmm. raves. Uh, ah. so like I, and it, it was below my level of consciousness, but I would go to clubs and not drink and, and dance, uh, because that's where I could find the energy. Uh, and now I find it in circle with, with our circle, but that's what I was seeking. And I would just, I would just be on the floor weeping. I, there's a time I actually got kicked out of a club because I thought I was on drugs. <laughs> oh um, my gosh, I'm so sorry. I don't mean to laugh. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's funny now. Yeah. But I was, um, the, the bouncer was convinced that I was on drugs. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, no, <laughs> no, I'm not. And he was surprised whenever I could speak mm-hmm. clearly because mm-hmm. I wasn't. But what I was on was ecstasy. ecstasy like, but not the drug. Yeah. I was on ecstasy. I was yeah. having an ecstatic experience and on the floor. So now I find it affirming. <laughs> But I was annoyed. Back. Yeah, I, yeah, well, annoyed because yeah. they're, they're they're messing with your bus. They were they were really killing my bus. But but those those moments, those ecstatic yeah. moments on the on the dance floor before I knew what it was, and then I found it in our circle was an opportunity for me to connect with something much much bigger than me. And then now that I have it as a spiritual practice, it's um, the the chance to physicalize things in my body and to feel. The, the ecstasy in my body and to feel my feet on the floor, I become so aware of everything in my body, the, the wind on my skin and my feet on the ground and my clothes, you know, swooshing around wow. and my hair was touching my back, you know, and the, the heat of the fire on my face and the sounds of the drumming and the singing around me, like everything becomes so much more vivid. But very sensual, it sounds yeah, like. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Sensual is in the senses. Yes. Mm-hmm. Everything is so sensual for me. And in a culture that is constantly criticizing, I believe it's criticizing my body, telling me I'm too big, I'm too small, whatever, like whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and that my body isn't right the way that it is. It's a really, for me, it's a really affirming practice to be in my body right. in this way. Right, right. And and um, one of the things that I have found is <clears throat> I also get that from music. Mm. Um, so I get it when we're, so um, it's so funny. Sometimes for rituals, someone will ask me to drum while they do whatever it is. And they'll say, you know, sorry that you're not going to be able to participate. And it's like, okay, <laughs> but I'm, I'm creating my own experience because it's me, you know, with the drums and, and it's, it's repetitive. So I can really allow my, I can, I don't have to focus. Like I don't have to say words. I can really like just start creating my own experience, which I think is charged by the energy of what they're doing, even though I'm not uh, participating specifically in their trance Mm -hmm. work. Um, And so that is an incredible um, uh, part of the fun. But I I get that experience also when I say at a, a symphony concert, when I go, when I hear music and I, but again, it's not, if I'm just sitting there, you know, trying to look, you know, intellectual because I'm listening to, you know, some 20th century <laughs> avant-garde music, um, it's, it's going to be a different experience than when I just sit there and I just let the music wash over me. Mm-hmm. And I, sometimes I close my eyes and like, which is kind of stupid. You paid money so you could see them live and mm-hmm. I'm not, but close my eyes and, and, and let the music, literally let the feeling of the music wash over me. But I'm also, there's some sense of involved with that as well as, you know, you can, you can actually feel the air movement from all those arms, like wailing away yeah, on their violins yeah. and, and the, 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 the sound as it comes towards you, you feel the, the, um, the waves of sound. And so I remember, oh my gosh, what was it? It was like, I think it was the Schubert eighth or ninth. I can't remember. And I remember, um, kind of weeping and trying to... <laughs> 
So it's kind of, you know, it's like it, when someone's opening a candy wrapper or mm-hmm. they're talking or something. Yes. Like, yeah. So I'm trying not to sniffle. Yeah. <laughs> As this music is, it, it's the, this really powerful, powerful music that, you know, it was written by an old white guy like 200 years ago, but still it had the power to move me in that moment. Mm. And, and I, I really, you know, d- it didn't last long, but I touched that, that ecstatic experience. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. One of the things that you said when you were talking about the body, you will probably not remember this, but there was a movie out probably before you were born called 10. Mm-mm. Have you heard? Okay. Um, it it uh, starred Bo Derek, who at the time was like the sex goddess of the time. And uh, Dudley Moore, who is a com- kind of comic. Anyway, the point is that she liked to have sex to the music of Bolero. And then, you know, it gets, it builds, it builds, mm-hmm. it, there's a climate, literally, and that's when she wanted to, you know, have the, the, the achievement of the sexual experience. I think that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. But it was, what was funny was that as they're going through this, the music, the record gets stuck. <laughs> <laughs> And she she was so used to doing like doing this act to that mm-hmm. that so I you know I think about how we can we in trying to get that experience we create all of these little things that kind of quote unquote air quotes up here um, have to happen to have this ecstatic experience anyway that's just an <laughs> aside but yeah so that's why we individually do it mm-hmm. um, um why 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 do we do it in ritual well. One of the things you already mm-hmm. brought up, you said like uh, when you're drumming, uh, you're feeding off the energy of the people around you mm-hmm. and they're probably feeding off of you as well. That's, I think, one of the reasons is like it's a, it's a way for me to have an individualized experience that's also Ooh. collective and that the energy work that I'm doing is contributing to and feeding off of the energy that's going around with other people. So for me in circle, it's not when we're doing ecstatic work, it's not one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one equals the number of us. Mm-hmm. It's like all, each of us, one plus one, blah, 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 equals like 3,000. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's, it's exponential. exponential. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. And so it's funny because, funny, ironic, but um, it's, I find that the ecstatic experience is often a goal of our rituals, right? That we are, we're going into this ecstatic experience as a part of our working, but that the energy from that can be used to charge other things that we, you know, if our, our, our intentions or, um, um, you know, if we want to send energy to, we want to send some of that, that gained energy, garnered mm-hmm. energy, gathered energy. We want to send it to say, you know, for, I don't know, our government or, or mm-hmm. something like that, or, or, um, or, you know, a, a piece or we can, that it creates this, uh, uh, incredible amount of energy that I could just like, you know, kind of coast on and ride on and, you know, take a little piece of it home with me or whatever, or I can then channel it and then mm. give it to something else, send it forward and use that energy for really, really positive, um, uh, uh, sustaining purposes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it also, because there's vulnerability involved or maybe not because mm-hmm. of, but one of the reasons that that is included in this is that there's vulnerability involved. There's trust. Uh, so it also really creates this community. Mm -hmm, I think, mm -hmm. um, it strengthens my bonds with everybody involved because I have to suspend this self-consciousness, that part of my ego that's aware. And I have to surrender to that. And, um, I have to, if I'm going to do this in a way that's really vulnerable and I see each each person in our community doing that. And then in that surrendering and that opening is that vulnerability. And then that not only strengthens the ecstatic magic that we're doing in that moment, but it also strengthens my relationship to each of those people oh, of course, after, during right. and afterwards. Yeah. And I can say from our retreat that we went on, uh, I feel more connected. Like it, it definitely, I it definitely strengthened my connection because of those experiences. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And, and so, and paradoxically, because we can hold paradox, mm-hmm. paradoxically, you know, it creates, it creates that sense of community and that sense of being one of many. But I also, I, I mentioned this earlier that when I'm doing, when I'm uh, having an individual, I don't want to say individual, but um, an ecstatic experience on my own, I come out of it with self-knowledge or something, you know, there's often something that uh, resides 
in that experience that I can then take away with me. And so I feel it strengthens me as a part of a community, but it also strengthens me as an individual. Mm -hmm. And so it just, it cre- I mentioned this earlier, it creates a better me. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, it, it, and, and I would hope that all of the women who are participating in that, that we're getting that sense of community, but we're also then getting like a little bit of that energy so we can walk a little bit taller and, mm-hmm. and, and, and stronger and more powerfully and take space um, as, as uh, individual women. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah, I do too. But- and, and I think that in a world that's constantly trying to sell me something, either physically like to purchase with money or sell me an idea of that, like my body isn't right or whatever it is, uh, having this practice where I can do it by myself or I can do it with other people and all that's needed is vulnerability and uh, connection and some time and space, I think it's a real, uh, it's just a really defiant act. It's just <laughs> this wonderfully defiant act to say, like, I have everything I need right here, right That's inside right. of me. Oh, my gosh, yes, yes. And to, and and the experience, I think, um, allows us to, to get that sense, but also pow- empowers us to, mm-hmm. to carry that with us at other times when we're not actually in the experience. Yeah, I yeah. can see why religions have tried to suppress ecstasy um because boy howdy it, because because it's uncontrollable so yes. here's the thing yeah. and this is one of the things that i see so much with so many religions is that they want a little taste of that because they need i don't know if they need it but it helps their the congregants to to get a sense of their vocation or their mm-hmm. relationship with God or what, or with the religion or whatever. So they need a little bit of it, but they're also very suspicious of it because uh, once you've opened that door, it's really hard. It's like you open the door and there's a tornado or something. So you're <laughs> trying to slam it back. Mm-hmm. You can't, you can't. Yeah. And so it's hard to, to control the individual's experiences of that, even if they're in community. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, and to me, hearing you say that, it's hard to control. Yes, so let it be out of control. <laughs> let, let it be out of control. Like, let yes. let let it let that be, and Ooh. and like let that empower, and let that let that be a whirlwind, mm-hmm. and like let's go. Yes, but, but I think the other one, the the other approach is like must close <laughs> box, must close box. <laughs> Put, put, slam it put, down, slam, slam it down, down. <laughs> put it away, put it away, so I can tell you what mm-hmm. you're supposed to feel supposed and what to... you're supposed to think. Um, but the truth is, is that in those ecstatic moments, I find out what I really, who, what and who I really am. Oh, yeah. And I also touch the sacred in a way um, that doesn't need a middleman. It's really, a really radical form of anarchy. Oh. Right? Oh. Right? right? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. yeah, because it's just me having my experience with my ideas, my thinking, you know, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, yeah. And, and we could both be, we could both be having an ecstatic experience at the same time and we're still going to come out of it different. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think, um, as we were around the fire circle, um, not that I spent a lot of time looking around, but I did spend Mm -hmm. some time looking around because for me, seeing people, uh, helps with my ecstatic experience. But, um, I don't think any two people were doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I would agree. I would agree. So, so let's talk a little bit about, we, I, I, I mentioned really briefly, um, how Bo Derek's character in the, in the movie Ten <laughs> needed the music yeah. to, I, or I don't know if she needed it, but to, to get to the height she wanted to mm-hmm. get, she, she needed Bolero. Yeah. Um, but what are some of the things that we do to kind of cultivate that ecstatic experience? Uh, maybe we could just like list off some. Yeah. That'd okay. Be great. Uh, for me, uh, physicalized in my body. Mm-hmm. So like movement. Movement. Yes. Um, I mentioned drumming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then kind of a part of that is chanting. Uh, so yeah. particularly one of the things that we did at the retreat, uh, we, we do a lot of chanting in a lot of our, um, a lot of our rituals and gatherings. Um, but one of the things that a number of us said was that we wished we could take one chant and just sing it longer. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so that's what we did. And we just, we chanted, was it 30? We, 30? we did for 30 minutes. The, yeah. 30 fucking minutes. 30 of, fucking minutes. <laughs> of chanting. And so that, is mind blowing. Mm-hmm. I mean that, you know, that idea of just singing that chant and, and I mean, you, you're building these kind of, um, uh, avenues of, of, of 
of, of your spirit traveling and they go round and round and each time it gets higher and higher and higher. So drumming, chanting, and movement. There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> That's a party. <laughs> that That's does sound party. like a great party. But we do other things too, yes, don't we? Yeah. Another thing for me is, uh, it has to do with my body, but as much of my skin as exposed as possible so that I can feel the air on my skin, my hair on my, like my hair swinging back and forth on, on touching my back, my feet on the ground. I couldn't do that because the fire pit was mm-hmm. rocky, but I really was upset that I couldn't take my shoes off. But <laughs> yeah, the sense your senses, but I, I really want to engage as many of my senses as possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that I think, um, you know, that ability to just kind of like relax and like the heat, the heat on one side, the cold mm-hmm. in the back and, and hear the sounds of our chanting and the sounds of the fire crackling and the smell of the fire. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that, that was pretty powerful though. I did not take off as, as much clothing. <laughs> I think that was pretty cool. Like you, 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 but I was going hard. You were going I was hard. raging. You were like, <laughs> uh, so I was sweating, yeah, but it was great. <laughs> oh, good, good. Okay, good. And, um, one of the things that I think is so important is safety. Mm-hmm. So you you had mentioned um, earlier about uh, not worrying about, about what people thought about you. I would hazard that if I were to plop you down, um, I don't know, in the pearl mm-hmm. and um, and and said, OK, have an ecstatic experience. It'd be a little bit harder. right? It would be. Yeah. But but we create um, generally we create uh, pretty safe containers where women um, I well, where I feel comfortable dropping, you know, the walls, allowing myself to be vulnerable, um, allowing myself to maybe look silly or, or whatever. Um, and so that, I think that the safety to be able to do that is an, a, an important part of it. Yeah. That, that I love the way you say that because for me, it's like that safety, um, all of those agreements that we have on, on how we're going to be supportive of each other and hold space for each other and allow space for each other. Um, creates this environment almost like where there's no rules, but it's this no rules thing happening inside of this container that has had so many agreements and so much trust put in. Right. So it's not like going to the wild west. Mm-hmm. It's like going to this like really safe container that's been created where then we can kind of abandon. We literally can't abandon. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that because it's, it's not that, so, so it's not that we like agreements aren't rules. Mm-hmm. Agreements are agreements, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. and there's the, and whereas um, to me, rules are something that someone decides, and then we can decide whether or not we're going to do them, mm-hmm. and we're going to break the rules or follow the rules, right? But agreements are things that we've agreed that we're going to be in alignment with, so that we can create that. And so, um, so it's still, it's still, it's like really, it's a framework of agreements, not rules, so that we really can just like drop it. Mm-hmm. And I and I think that that's super important to to recognize because if we were that same group of people and then we brought someone just walked in that um has not not only um made those agreements but really have a good sense of it has internalized those agreements i would not feel safe i would not be able to to do the i i say quote unquote the work but to be able to drop into that type of um that type of, uh, I wouldn't be able to allow myself to, to drop into that kind of, uh, vulnerable state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same. Mm -hmm. That's my experience too. Yeah. So, so one of the things about this is that we, we say that there's no rules, but that's because, um, we, we work with women with whom we feel safe Mm -hmm. and, um, and I've, I've kind of been thinking about this just for, for other reasons, but you know, we, there's, uh, there's, t- there are times when I would have a maybe more controlled ecstatic experience because I can't, I feel as if in that space, I can't be as vulnerable. I can drop some of it, but I don't feel comfortable dropping it all because mm-hmm. I feel like I, either I'm a facilitator or, you know, a vibes watcher or something where I still have to kind of keep one foot on the ground, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and, and that will, I can still have the, ex, an experience, but it may not, I may not be, be able to go as deeply or as high, depending on how you think about sure, it. Sure. Sure. Mm-hmm. Or both at the same time. Or both at the same time. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. So um, other things. Uh, I, I think the only other thing I could add is just having that space for the parts of me that are maybe childlike or Ooh. that are um, silly or, you know, just just uh, the parts of me that wants to just howl at the moon 
Mm-hmm. You know, or the part of me that just wants to laugh uncontrollably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or yes. cackle, or yeah. you know, just holding that space for all the different parts of me developmentally and mm-hmm. all the different parts of my spirit. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I think back to um, oh golly, one of the things that we d- we didn't mention was um, aspecting, and I think back to. Um, Yemaya, because <laughs> because a part of that ex- that experience, I really wanted to feel the ocean. Oh yeah, yeah, all she around did. It. She did. Yes, <laughs> and um, yeah, and uh, and that was probably again that was one of those instances where I was allowing, I I dropped all of those barriers and let her in. Yes, and she <laughs> she's not a, she's not really aware of the fact that you know I can't breathe underwater. Yeah, and yeah. and or or she doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's like come home quicker to me, baby, or something. I don't <laughs> right. know. I don't know, but 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 I, I just remember that a part of that was, um, I I felt really really open. I just felt I could feel I I literally the, uh, feel could feel the stars. I could feel the mm. fire. Um, I could I could feel the sounds. There was a group of people mm-hmm. further down the beach. I could feel the sounds against my eardrums, and I needed I needed I really really needed to feel the water mm-hmm. too. And somebody kept me from that, but yeah, me. <laughs> but still, because yeah. you can't breathe <laughs> yeah, but for the for the aforementioned reasons. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah. But but I just that's a that was another um, experience where again those senses. I really was delighting in those mm-hmm. senses. Oh, so yeah, yeah. So so what you're saying, aspecting. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. yes, yeah, indeed. for sure. Yeah, sometimes uh, those kid, those two, they're not the same, but they oftentimes can be. Right, because it's an alter state. Yeah, 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 yeah yes, they can yes. Be overlapping yeah. It doesn't me. have to be, mm-hmm. but sometimes it can be very ecstatic. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's a very mm-hmm. good point. Mm-hmm. Thank you, thank you. So I think we kind of mentioned some of these, um, but I was going to say those were the things that we used to kind of cultivate mm-hmm. um, the ecstatic experience. Some of what are some of the things that would inhibit the ecstatic experience? The first thing for me is like a lack of of trust and intimacy with mm-hmm. the people I'm mm-hmm. around that mm-hmm. might cause self consciousness. I wouldn't allow, like you spoke about having the rules that keep you from fully dropping. But Mm -hmm. for me, it would also be, uh, worried about, are they going to be safe? Are they going to be a safe person? Are they going to be judging me? Are they, or are they going to, I'm going to be in this open state and then they're not going to follow the agreements. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 I never thought of it that way. I was thinking more of, yeah. Yeah. So that, um, and then also, um, you know, there's a, there is to, to allow myself to fall into that experience, I need to allow myself some other things. I need to allow myself time, mm-hmm. um, the safe space. Um, I need to allow myself um, the knowledge that afterwards I would still be safe. So, you know, during, like, mm-hmm. as, as we learned with Yema, yeah, yes. during the experience, you, I was like, whatever, like, <laughs> yeah, let's take off my clothes, blah, blah, blah. And then after... Am I, will I, will I put myself in a place that doesn't feel safe or will I, you know, will after, after the experience, will I feel, um, bereft? Um, because that can sometimes happen. Um, and so, so I don't know what that means. Uh, maybe time and space and I guess that's the environment that you were mentioning, the safe environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a, um, but for me, I think of it less at during the experience, but me thinking ahead, me worrying about what's going to happen after. Yeah, that mm-hmm. makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I and I think we kind of mentioned some of the others. Um, one other I'd like to just kind of uh, mention is this um, this idea of in my head. So it's totally me, and I don't know if anyone else experiences this. Um, that maybe it, the ecstatic experience should look like something. Ooh, okay. And, mm-hmm. and if it doesn't, it's kind of like Bo Derek and her <laughs> and, and her record, you know. And, and if it doesn't, am I, you know, am I getting there? Usually, it's not a big issue, but I think about it. I I think about it more, um, like in advance. So let's say we're planning a ritual, okay, and then we're going to do this. And I and I I kind of always worry about the energy, and and so um, I think what I'm ultimately worrying about is, am I going to have a, an a quote unquote experience mm-hmm. that that is good, ecstatic, whatever. And so, um, so there's shadow in there. And then, you know, the, a part of that is judgment, you know, wor- worrying about other people judging me and me, <laughs> and me judging myself, you know? Yeah. So, 
um, there's there's a there are a number of things that are going on in there in terms of shadow that we can talk about another time. Another one for me is this sense of feeling rushed. Oof. or this pressure for it to look a certain way, like mm-hmm. it, like what you said, mm-hmm. um, or or just being us all being out of sync. And, and so for me, an ecstatic experience with a group is that we all kind of fall into a sync with each other. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that we're all at the same pace. At the same point. But yes. it, yeah, it doesn't mean we're all at the same point, but we're like, we're all vibing with each other. And it, it doesn't have to be exact but it's we're we're working together even if we're working at different paces or different energy levels but if i've been in i've had experiences where it's like one person is like ramrodding the energy (laughs) through you know yes yes or the opposite where one person is just like stuck you know like a weight just Mm -hmm. holding us back Mm -hmm. um and so there there's this for me there's this beautiful space where we're all doing our own thing and meeting our own needs However, we're all working together. So would you say that that's this, uh, that, um, that when this is vibing, when it's going well, that everyone's allowing themselves to be vulnerable? Yes. Because what I see when that person's kind of ram running that control issues, you know, Mm -hmm. like we will cone. Yes. Yeah. 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 They're out there with the drum, like bam, 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 bam. And it just feels like the Kool-Aid man. Yeah. Like. (laughs) Busting through the wall, you know, and it's like, well, man, we're all waiting at the door. Yeah. yeah. Like we're all ringing the doorbell together Mm -hmm. and then you just Kool-Aid man through like, hold on. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So there, there is that. And then there's the, the one that, you know, that kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. And again, to me, it seems like that's issues with vulnerability, Mm -hmm. like whatever, you know, so I, I don't, I don't know because I'm judging, but, um, but yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would probably say that there's. Mm -hmm shadow and vulnerability Mm -hmm. in in Mm -hmm. those things yeah so those are those are major inhibitors major ecstasy kills ecstasy buzz kills (laughs) ecstasy killers yeah or or (laughs) inhibitors in as much as you can't even get there it's not even like they Mm -hmm. you get there and it stops it you can't even get there yeah Mm -hmm. unfortunately for me when those things happen it becomes performative for me i just end up like okay i'll be here and i'll sing and i'll dance around and maybe other people have an experience but for me it's like Yep. You know, and there's yeah. some joy in dancing, so it's not mm-hmm. like you know, but it's definitely like it changes everything for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We talk about our experiences, and then um, we've talked about our experiences in ritual. And I, I, I honestly believe that when I have an ecstatic experience, that the energy that I am generating is going to the betterment of the world, right? And, you know, I, sometimes I send, like, I, I send it to Palestine or I send it to our, to Washington, D.C. or, or whatever. And f- uh, for a long period in there, I actually sent it to a president that we used to have that we don't have mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. But um, to, to kind of, to help them because they, because mm-hmm. everyone could use a little energy. Um, but I wonder, you know, if, if, if we, if people would allow that vulnerability if more people wouldn't be able to experience this. Mm -hmm. I agree. And, and I would, this is kind of, this is related, but somewhat of a tangent, but I think that the closest thing that many people feel safe enough to have an ecstatic practice is through sex. Oh yeah. Se- or drinking or alcohol or drugs. Yes. It's sex or drugs. Yes. Sex, so drugs, and rock and roll. Yes. Yeah. Well, actually all three of those, right? So the, like yeah. the, that naughty music, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. you know, and, and whenever I'm at shows, I have ecstatic experiences. Yeah. 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 Uh, but a lot of times I think th- through sex, that's the, that's a, that's the, the societally appropriate place where people can oh, let go right. and scream and holler. And drop that conscious, that self consciousness, yeah, you know. Yeah. And 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 I would say that um, there are actually a lot of other places that we can do that, but I don't think they're as societally approved. Yes. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would love to see a world where people could find this sort of practice and be okay with themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, in other contexts, like yeah, yeah. turning on music in your living room and dancing and singing, mm-hmm. um, or uh, taking off all your clothes and and um, having a sensual experience in the shower. Mm-hmm. Sensual meaning like the five senses. Right, you know? right, right, right. 
Yeah, I, I think when we do see it, you're right. It's kind of this really goal driven kind of go like going for the orgasm yeah, yeah. or or you see you sometimes see it at a at a sporting event right mm-hmm. where they're really the 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 team is really pushing for their team to win mm-hmm. and and not actually experiencing the experience right because that's the the ecstasy like right. the the move towards the the orgasm yeah you get like an ecstatic experience too but moving towards the orgasm mm-hmm. is is ex ecstasy or right. ecstatic right yeah um that that feeling when you know the da 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 and everybody's getting up and you know there's a guy who's painted himself like the two different yes. colors yeah and, yeah you know and you know th- there there is that as well and but we think often i would imagine we think of that as you know uh supporting our team so our team can win mm-hmm. as opposed to we're out here with like you know ten thousand of my best friends yeah all painted blue and gold and let's do this let's, yeah, yeah yeah, yeah. mm-hmm yeah, I would I would agree with you. Yeah, yeah. So I think there are there are moments where maybe we dance with this idea of mm-hmm. ecstasy in our culture, but uh, if we just went a little bit, if we just reframed it like you mm-hmm. just said, uh, it could it could be even better. It could be so even more better. enriched. Well, yeah, yeah, because we can actually enjoy the experience for the experience, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or <sighs> um, or like playing and tickling with a child. Like mm-hmm. that's one of the things I think why people love babies so much and small children is because they haven't learned yet to, to tamper those things. Oh, right. You know? Mm-hmm. So like they do laugh uncontrollably and yes. they do act silly because they don't, they haven't learned to be self-conscious yet. And then I think they give us permission to do that too as adults. They do. They do. Yeah. Oh, what that, we could do that more often. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Well, we, I think we can. Well, we, yeah, we <laughs> that's can. why we, <laughs> We can't, you know, maybe we'll just model for the rest of the world, right? Yeah, that's you know, right. Until they get, well, you know, like, as, as they say, we say, so mote it be. So you know, mote it be. They can, they can do this too. So, so shall we go on to our yeah, poem? Yeah. Okay. Um, so our poem, believe it or not, because we tend to pick, um, choose women mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. Um, you may be underrepresented voices. Mm-hmm. Um, today we're going with a poem by Goethe. Yep. <laughs> so, so uh, whatever, is it Wolfgang? I can't remember his name, but old German, yeah, um, uh, 19th old, century. Old dead white guy. <laughs> old dead white yeah. guy. But, you know, he wrote a poem that I think is just perfect. Yeah. So let's do this. Yeah. Even, um, even a even a, a broken clock is right twice a day. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, yes, exactly. So um, this, it doesn't have a title, but um, it's a, it's, it's, if, if it did, it would probably be Dance of Bliss, wouldn't you mm-hmm. say? Okay. I would. I would. Huh. What is this dance of bliss cascading through my senses? I feel new life, holy rapture, burning through my nerves and veins. Was it a god who shaped these symbols, summoning this inner ecstasy, filling my impoverished heart with joy and revealing, through some mysterious impulse, nature's secret sinews surrounding me? Am I a god? I am filled with such light. In this pure array of emblems, I see nature's workings laid bare before me. Only now do I comprehend the sage's wise words. The realm of spirit is not barred. It is your mind that is closed, your heart that is lifeless. Student, rise without fright and bathe your earthly breast in the rosy dawn's light. Mm. As all things, one in one are woven each in the other works and lives and is whole. While heavenly beings climb and descend, passing down their golden pails, and with their incense pinioned wings, all heaven and earth are blessed. They sing in symphony through all things. Dang. Yeah. I mean, I think he... If judging from this poem, he experienced ecstasy. He has experienced some ecstasy, yes. And and I feel that. I feel that. There's so much I can relate to in that. (laughs) I know, I know. It's it's amazing. But thank you so much for being a part of our discussion of ecstatic spirituality. And may you have a little ecstasy. Yes, in your own life, wherever it shows up. Exactly. So mode it be. So mode it be. We hope you have enjoyed the magic that has unfolded here at Witchy Wit. It would be great if you would help make Witchy Wit possible and get access to exclusive content by donating on Patreon. We'd love it if you join our Witchy community and enjoy shareable content on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. 
Would you do us a big favor and support us by rating and reviewing us wherever you get your podcasts? It's free and helps witchy folks find us. Feel free to email us at witchywitpodcast at gmail.com. We love to hear from our community. Reach out and let us know what's brewing in your cauldron. New episodes are released every second and fourth Friday. Follow us on your favorite podcasting platform so our episodes go right to your playlist. You can listen as you ride your broom. Stay Stay witchy, witchy, y'all!